looks like it there. But not appearing here. Um, okay. Oh, let's open a window. Oh, what's going on now? I don't know. Uh, let's check this way. My channel looks like it's working. Okay, good. Um, so, hello everybody, welcome to uh, this uh, video, this stream. So today we're going to look at uh, a few different builds for uh, Korn using this new Slaves to Darkness book. Um, and yes, yeah, see how we can, see what we can really do using the new uh, Korn. Um, Mark, I guess, and uh, abilities. So, uh, jumping straight in, I have three. Um, I have three uh, lists that I've built. Two of them are more uh, competitive in nature. At least I think they are. Was worth a bit of tailoring and um, a bit of playing with to to find the really the best build. Um, but uh, yeah, one of them is more of a fun, uh, fluffy kind of build, but could also be pretty strong, I think. Uh, so, diving straight into the first one. Um, m many of these units can be swapped in and out uh, at your discretion uh, also, but there is a theme behind the first two, which you will see as we progress. Um, so we're going for the Ravagers with the first one, so we can have lots of heroes with their own command traits and decide who is going to be the general in each turn. Um, also potentially bring in more Marauders or Cultists to really make things a bit more, a bit more chaotic for your opponent um, and support your, uh, your advances. So we start with the Chaos Lord. Um, I haven't really given much for um, focus on the actual uh, magic items and traits for this. I'll leave that up to you. Uh, but the Curse Lord with a Thermal Rider Cloak, I think, is a good, solid choice because then he'd be able to keep up with Chaos Knights and keep them wholly within 12. So he can use their ability to pile in and attack uh, again with his command ability. Uh, and again, Chaos Lord on Manticore, same thing really, um, making use of uh, better speed is a, is a big beat stick. I think he's a lot better now, is the Chaos Lord, Lord on Manticore, I general, generally tend to go with the Blade and the Lance. Um, Chaos Lord on Demonic Mount for his command ability. And then we have a Chaos Sorcerer Lord in here. And he is going to be bringing the Endless Spell, the Eightfold Doom Sigil. Um, so what we're trying to do there is use the... Oh, we're also taking the uh, Bloodmarked Warband. So that's the Battalion, where corn heroes, whenever they kill something, they grant an extra attack to another unit with Holy Within 12. So we're using the... Uh, that uh, ability from the warband to the from the battalion to grant a unit plus one attack, and we're stacking that with the, the plus one attack from the eightfold doom sigil ability. So three. Uh, so our where are we? Our chaos knights, for example, with their ensorcel weapons, can have up to five attacks um, per turn. Um, if you stack that with the Chaos Lord on Demonic Mount with the plus one to hit, they're hitting on twos, re-rolling ones. And with if your general is near them, um, then they are wounding on twos also. So hitting on twos, re-rolling ones, wounding on twos with five attacks per night. And that's not including the, uh, the steeds. 
so that's generally what we are going to try and do. Uh, attacking as often as we can first with our heroes to stack the the plus one attack buffs on our units or even other characters um, to really increase our damage outputs. I have a unit of Cypher Lord in here because I had some spare points left and we're taking these the small unit of Cypher Lords to basically try and do the, the Slaneshi thing and on a 4 plus pick a unit within 3 inches in the uh, uh, in the combat phase and it strikes at the end of the combat phase so for 70 points it's not a bad idea to do that with the Cypher Lords and I would take the same spell with the uh, the Chaos Sorcerer as well, the Binding Damnation so he can also make a unit attack last so you'll get to use potentially you'll get to use one or two characters and one or two units uh, in the same turn attacking before your enemies do um, which can really uh, help stack that damage and put out a lot of uh, a lot of pain they also have the chaos war shrine you can use any of the prayers on this um, reroll all to hits I think it is with the corn one um, I can't remember what the other ability is, but yeah, or, or there's the Nurgle ability, rerolling to wound, um, and yeah, there's so many, uh, so many things that you can do with the Chaos War Shrine, and allowing the uh, the save after the six up save after, it's going to help your army survive a lot more. Uh, your Marauders are going to get a bunch of attacks. Um, they have rend as well, as long as there's 20. Um, they would be hitting on threes, wounding on threes, with rend one, damage one, two attacks a piece, a piece with the axes and flails. Um, and that's base. So there's a, there's a potential there to do uh, a lot, a lot of attacks. Um, so nice and simple, pretty straightforward with this list. Um, there's not a lot to do really. It's corn. You're going to go forward. You're going to try and get into combat, get the eightfold doom sigil out, um, and start killing things. Um, so we'll move quickly on to uh, second list here. Uh, we're going ravages again. Uh, with this one, again we are taking the Bloodmarked uh, Battalion, uh, only this time we are not taking any uh, Chaos Sorcerers, we're leaving the Sorcerers out because we are taking a Blood Secretor, because uh, there's no point in taking a Sorcerer if you have to re-roll your own casting rolls for the Eightfold Doom Sigil. So we take a blood, uh, blood to crater for his plus one attack for uh, corn model units, or is it just corn units? Holy within whatever it is, sixteen, I think. Um, again, the heroes you can swap out, uh, but these are what I would have have gone for. Again, the chaos lord for his paling and attack a second time. Like the Chaos Lord on Manticore. The Exalted Hero just to take up another hero slot and uh, another general trade. Um, don't expect him to do much, but if he's getting plus two attacks, then maybe d6 plus two attacks isn't too bad. Um, and the Chaos Lord on Derpadrak because I had points to spare. I normally would norm normally would use the Chaos Lord on Demonic Mount, but I had points to spare, so this guy, I used this guy instead. Um, again, units of Marauders, lots of attacks. Chaos Knights, lots of attacks. Um, also Wrathmongers. I allied in uh, a unit of Wrathmongers in this, 
And these are going to be a second line, but basically, ideally, just to provide the bubble of plus one attack to other units as well. Um, so with the Wrathmongers and the Blood Secretor giving units, if you keep them together, giving units plus two attacks apiece. So your Marauders could have four attacks. Um, each, which is pretty brutal. If there's still 20 of them, then that's, uh, that's a lot of potential damage output. Um, Chaos Water on again just to do its thing, keep people alive. Well worth its 170 points. Um, and that's pretty much it for that. Uh, list as well. It, again, it's pretty much straightforward. There's not much to do with corn apart from for, push it forward, get it in combat. Um, but do bear in mind your uh, your battle plan and play for the scenario. But with the amount of damage that these should be able to put out, just with the sheer number of attacks uh, and rend, you're looking. You, you will be looking to uh, to tear people to pieces. Um, so quickly moving on to the final one, which is a more fun build. Um, and on this one, we are going for the Runebringer, uh, Ruinbringer Warband. So this is all cavalry based, all very fast moving, and pretty much yeah, everything is is cavalry. Um, just again to show to display that you can play the the whole the completely mounted build or army with uh, slaves to darkness. Um, of course, I've gone corn here because that's the theme of today. But you could go any. Um, you could choose any mark for these. Um, but uh, again, uh, so chaos lord on demonic mount uh, for the battalion. Two units of Marauder Horsemen for units of Chaff, and a good screen for your rest of your cavalry. And uh, then we have Knights, three units of Knights, and one Gobby's Chariot. All those are in your battalion. Uh, except this Legion this time is going to be the Despoilers, because we are taking the Chaos Lord on Manticore, Chaos Sorcerer Lord on Manticore, and Chaos Demon Prince, who is going to be the General, to give him the 5 plus post uh, after save and the ability to potentially heal our three monsters here um, again on this we're taking the eightfold doom sigils so that the chaos sorcerer lord on manticore can place that uh, in a good place with his decent movement value and fly um, and grant people more attacks and yeah, everything here can fly or move minimum of 10. So uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And the Corn Slaves to Darkness Demon Prince has a very good command ability. Halfing run and charge rolls for um, units within 18. So uh, potentially stopping you from being charged is very useful. Uh, again, Curse Marauder Horseman, they're really just to be screens for your heavier units. Um, and then all of the battalion, when they charge on a 2+, plus, will do D3 mortal wounds to, the, to a unit within uh, an inch of them. So if you're all charging in, or preferably multiple units charging into one, you're going to get a, a fair amount of, of mortal wounds there. The Gobby's Chariot has its own rule which does that, so the Gobby's Chariot can potentially do 2d3 mortal wounds uh, the turn it charges. Um, and yeah, again, it's another one of those very uh, smashy, um, smashy lists. Charging in, doing lots of attacks, lots of impact hits and mortal wounds before your opponent gets to, to fight. 
Um, there's not a lot, again, there's not a lot tactics wise. Only, I guess, with the knights, uh, I would potentially keep one unit back. Um, you don't really need to because they don't matter on the charge. You could change them for the cursed lances. For example, two of them with the cursed lance. You hold one of them back and you charge one in one turn. And then the, the next in your next turn, you retreat that unit or whatever's left of it and then charge in the fresh unit to the same target. Uh, this is called uh, cyclic charges or cycling charges. Um, and it's a good way of hitting a unit hard and still keeping one unit free to move about, potentially uh, go on to objectives or uh, and not be bogged down in combat doing minimal to no damage with zero rend on the lances. Um, I would consider doing the same with the Chaos Lord on Manticore if you're taking the Blade and Lance. If you are taking the Blade and Rune Shield, then you don't need to worry about that. Uh, I wouldn't bother with the Flail. Um, but yeah, it's. That's just my preference. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's it for this uh, brief video on uh, potential corn builds um, for today. Uh, in another couple of videos, I'm, in another video, two, or two videos, I'm going to discuss different um, different builds for your Slaves to Darkness, uh, different marks. So Nurgle and Zinch I'm going to cover. I don't think I'll bother with Selenesh. I don't think it will get much uh, playtime in the current uh, rules wise I think you'd be better off taking uh, Hedonites Knights of Slanesh for the Slanesh build um, again that's just my opinion um, anyway so I'm going to stop this uh, video here hope you enjoyed please leave uh, leave any thoughts comments um, and I will see you again next time for another uh, another god themed uh, chaos army builds. Until next time, take care.